If there was ever anyone who could juggle the dissimilar, say sports writing and faith writing, it would be Akron's Terry Pluto. Terry Pluto is an award-winning journalist, columnist, and author of some 24 books, mostly sports-related. Terry's here to talk with us tonight about his most recent book, which is not sports-related, but which is a collection of essays titled Faith and You. Terry, a couple of years ago, your byline began appearing in the Saturday Beacon Journal in the religion pages. So how did you go from writing sports columns, sports reporting, to doing faith writing? Uh, Jan Leach was the editor of the Beacon at the time, and she was talking to me, this is around 2000, about maybe writing something else, sports combined with something. and. Um, we were just talking about different things going on, and I, and I began mentioning her. I've been doing prison ministry for a number of years, and told her some war stories from that. And she just says, "Well, what do you think of our religion page?" And I said, "Well, I think the local stories that are done are excellent." And at the time, uh, Jim Carney was doing the stories, and they were great. And now Colette Jenkins does the same thing. And she said, "But I said those columns that run down the side that you pull from the water service, I said they stink." And she says, "Why?" I says, "Well, it's always the." Baptist fighting with somebody else, all these theological spitball fights. I said, people don't want to read that. They're tired of that stuff. And she says, well, what would you write if you were to do something? I said, I don't know, maybe something like, how does it feel when your prayers don't get answered? Or whenever people may be struggling with doubts. And she said, oh, that's really interesting. And then I heard nothing for six months. And then she came up to me and said, uh, I've been thinking about what you said. Would you want to try to write? one or two of those, and I said, well, why don't you understand, I mean, I'm coming from a Judeo-Christian background, and that's who I am. This is not going to be kind of a every single religion in, in mankind, history of mankind has created equal story, and I'm just going to write about where people are living, and she so said, give it a try, and it took about three or four months, I think, for people to even begin to notice it was there, and then slowly I started getting some emails and so on, and mostly that's where the ideas come from. People say, I'm struggling with my elderly mother, or, you know, I... I just people tell gossip about me, and of course we all gossip about each other. And so I began to write about that stuff. All I knew going into it was that I was not going to write about gay bishops, abortion, the hot button issues, because you give a hit, that, put that word and you'll find 5,000 stories on the internet. But you won't find a whole lot of stories about the fact that maybe you ought to plan your own funeral. So how did you go from the columns to two books? Because you started with Everyday Faith, mm -hmm. and now. Um, your most recent release? When I was doing some book signings for some of my sports books, people started saying, you ought to put those faith columns in a book. I've been mailing them to my niece. I've been sending them to my grandfather, that type of thing. And as an author, you're always looking, well, hey, that, that's actually the best kind of book. It's a new book of old stuff. I wouldn't have to write that one. So we put that together, became Everyday Faith. And it didn't sell as well as the sports stuff, but it sold well enough that uh, David Gray Publishing was interested in doing something else, and then I wanted to write some original stuff, and that's Faith in You. Mm -hmm. Have you always been a religious person? No, I mean, I, and I like to say people of faith, because, you know, religion's almost like an institution. And, you know, I go to Arlington Church of God in Akron, and I believe it's critical to go to church, but, um, I mean, I, I grew up in one of the bigger denominations, but it was real kind of token. I sort of went to church like you'd use de deodorant or brush your teeth, you should, but it's not exactly an emotional experience. And I think most adults don't get serious about their relationship with God until they go through a crisis. And in my case, it was taking care of my father during a stroke and all the, not just physical toll that takes, but emotional, financial, and everything else. How is the writing of a religious book, a faith book, different from writing a sports book? Opened up a brand new audience, most of, most of which is middle-aged and female, which is interesting. It really is. I mean, like if I give a faith talk, somewhere, I would say two-thirds of the audience will be female. Of course, if I'm going to do the Indians Browns, it's three-fourths male. That's one. And secondly, uh, it's a wide open area. I mean, there are a few minefields you could fall into, but generally, I found that uh, even most clergy have been pretty receptive to it, I think, because they just, they don't feel it's real threatening. And they get to steal some ideas and use it once in a while in their sermons. And that's always fun when I hear that, too. Was there a credibility gap? I mean, you're a macho sports writer. I mean, and here you're writing a faith book. I think by admitting that I struggle with gossip a lot and that I get mad at God or feel like God's not there sometimes. Or I remember one time I talked about how I semi-scammed the rental car company on paying, not paying for the gas. You know, did you fill it up? Yes, I did, but no, I didn't. And I think by doing that kind of stuff, 
it gives you credibility because out of your weaknesses, you know, be, the saying, I want to be a good person, and I'm not always a good person. And it's the spiritual battle. It's almost like the, the cartoon when you're a little kid. You've got the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other, and they're both whispering into your ear at the same time, and whose voice you're listening to. I think when you, when you write about that, people give you credibility because it sounds like them. Secondly, I tend to write about people who suffer a little bit. In fact, I really believe good preaching begins with suffering and ends with celebration. You know, Psalm 23 says, We will walk through the shadow of the valley of death. I will fear no evil because you walk with me. But we're all going to be walking through those valleys at times in our lives. Sure. Terry, thank you so much. Thank you, Jody.